Today's Tuesday tax tip of the week has to do with exemptions and who can take them. I'm going to start off with an example of a married couple who obviously can take two exemptions, one for each of them. Um, and then the next thing that we move on to would be qualified children. A qualified child is defined as a son, daughter, stepson, stepdaughter, qualified foster son or daughter, grandchild. All of these would be considered um, to be uh, people that would pass the relationship test for a qualified child. And uh, incidentally, an adopted child counts the same as, as, a, as a blood relative. Um, second test that they have to pass is the age test. The qualified child must be under age 19 or under age 24 and a full-time student. The third test would be the residencies test. Uh, the child must have its principal place of residence with the parents. Um, and if they're away at college, um, the principal residence would not change. Uh, fourth test is that the parents must provide more than 50% of the support. And the fifth test is that the child cannot file a joint return, um, must obviously file a single return. Uh, now, in a case of parents that are divorced, Typically, it's the custodial parent that would take the exemption. However, a non-custodial parent can take the exemption if all the following occur. One, the parents have to be divorced or legally separated for the last six months of the year. Um, one or both of the parents must have provided 50% or more of the support. One or both of the parents must have had custody for more than half the year and um, the, the custodial parent must release the exemption to the non-custodial parent. And the way this is generally done is on Form 8332. Uh, however, if it's a divorce that occurred before 2009, you can actually attach pages from the divorce decree uh, and use that. But typically, you need the Form 8332. Now, there are also other exemptions for people that are not qualified children, either eight children that are over age 24, over age 19, and not full-time students. Um, if they're a relative, uh, and pretty much almost any relative would qualify, they don't necessarily have to live with you. If they're a non-family member, they must live in the principal residence with you. Um, whether they live with you um, or don't live with you, if in the case of relative that may not have to, the income test is they must earn less than $3,950. That was the 2014 amount. And, and they must not provide more than 50% of their own support. So obviously the people taking the exemption must provide more than 50% of their support. Hopefully this helps you out, and I'll see you again next week.